Welcome to the Bayou Ranch. This is one of a kind. There is no place in the park system in Canada that illustrates and explains this period of uh, ranching history, cattle raising, like the Bar U does. The Bar U Ranch near Longview, Alberta, has celebrated 20 years as a Parks Canada site. It was chosen because of the number of buildings, but it was also chosen because it is right in the center of the foothills of Alberta ranching community. Many of the people that work here, volunteer here, are ranch raised and they appreciate being able to relate this earlier page in the history of Alberta. I grew up coming and visiting the owners of the place and playing here as a child, uh, carried on with uh, volunteering and uh, helping the site develop as it's done over the years. The Bar U was one of the first of the four founding big corporate ranches in this part of the world launched in 1882 and lasted as a, as a big company ranch right up until 1950 when it became a family ranching operation. They were providing beef for the mounted police, for the native tribes that were in the area, for the railways. Uh, they started shipping out to eastern Canada, into the U.S. at some times, and across the seas to the United Kingdom as well. So yeah, the product was at feeding the world. The Bar U was the most successful of the early corporate ranches in western Canada. The other ones didn't last as long. We had devastating blizzards. Some of those big ranches just couldn't take the loss of what uh, the livestock had happened in those blizzards. So it, through natural causes, and in some cases management, the other ranches didn't go on as long. The Bar U was attracting a lot of attention. By the end of World War I, the ranch received a visit from the Prince of Wales. He uh, dropped by the ranch. Legend has it, uh, they arrived near the evening. He went out for a jog after supper up the creek fell in love with the neighboring ranch and bought it before he left Canada. The only time probably a British royal has owned land outside of the United Kingdom, and he kept it from 1919 right up until 1962. So we had a royal neighbor. Another notable name associated with the Bar U is John Ware. And his name was always spoken with awe. He was a, a black rancher. He came up with uh, the very first uh, shipment of cattle that was uh, coming into the Bar U in the 1880s. Legend has it, he was a, a Carolina slave. After the Civil War, he went to Texas and learned uh, how to handle horses and how to handle cattle, and uh, got a job on this drive up to the Bar U. Delivered those cattle to the Bar U, helped build the saddle horse barn down here, some of the log work that went on. Eventually, he worked at some other ranches and went out uh, ranching on his own and, and got his own family up and going. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful cattleman and uh, one of the quite a few black cowboys that uh, worked in this area in the early part of our history. The Bar U also has a deep connection with the annual Calgary Stampede. In 1912, an American showman named Guy Wiedig wanted to put on a cowboy field day to salute those early days of ranching. Wiedig approached Bar U owner George Lane to ask for financial backing. Lane agreed, along with two former Bar U managers, Archie McLean and Pat Burns, and a man named A.E. Cross. As it turned out, that first Calgary Stampede was profitable and they didn't actually have to turn over the dollars. But there's some really big Bar U connections to that uh, Calgary Stampede. Three of the big four founders of the Calgary Stampede owned or managed the Bar U at different times in its history. The Bar U operated as a, a family operation from 1950 right up until 1991. Parks Canada was looking for a way to commemorate ranching and they were looking at various sites and the possibility of buying the headquarters site of the Bar U came up and uh, it all worked out. Parks Canada bought the headquarters site of the Bar U in 1991, 367 acres and all of the historical buildings. Uh, they opened the site in 1995. People from the area have always uh, felt that this was a magical place and we found more and more as we're sharing the stories with visitors from around the world, once they get here, uh, you can almost see the smiles start to form as they start to wander around the site and uh, the site has a way of just enveloping people and giving them a real good sense of what had happened to develop this part of the world. If you have an idea for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSBS-TV, 
3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSBS Public Television.